This is Annapolis, and these are the midshipmen who make up the brigade of the United States Naval Academy. These are their stories, full of their laughter, their heartache, their tragedies and triumphs. The stories of the men of Annapolis. This is the United States Naval Academy at Annapolis, where 3,800 midshipmen are taught to become officers and gentlemen. This is the United States Military Academy at West Point, where 2,800 cadets are taught to become officers and gentlemen. Because the two academies in peacetime and in war work and fight together, the authorities feel that the interchange of knowledge is beneficial to both academies. Exchange weekends have been included in the curriculum so the cadets can observe and assimilate the ways of the midshipmen at Annapolis. And the midshipmen, while at West Point, can... Well, sometimes they have ideas of their own never thought of by the authorities. This is the story of how midshipman Gordon Cochran, Jack Woods, and Bernard Weaver spent their exchange weekend at West Point. Fourteen thirty. Let's go. Corporal Juggers arriving at precisely fifteen twelve oh one. Sergeant Bowlegs exits office at 15-12-04. Sergeant Bowlegs leaving and is out of sight at 15-12-07. Jack, Jack! Gordy's got his hat off. Somebody must be coming. Let's see if I can spot him. Enemy sighted, Marty. This could be it. Change on the double. Beautiful day, gentlemen. Yes, beautiful, sir. Looking for something? Um, no, sir. Just admiring the weather and the scenery. Well, I guess you don't have many days like this in Annapolis. Well, we have some, sir. Ah, oh, no, that's that misplaced Navy loyalty. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, good day. Good day, sir. Again. Don't stop unless he stops us. Come on. Right on time, May. I think these exchange weekends are a wonderful idea. Well, I think they serve a good purpose for both academies. Who's thinking of the academies? I'm thinking of seeing both the boys at once. <laughs> so are you. Well, it sure comes in handy the way we've arranged things. No matter who wins at an Army-Navy game, we have a son to congratulate. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon, uh, Thayer Hotel. Uh, fine, go right on through, sir. Thank you. Okay, see you in a minute, Mom. Bye-bye. Well, I'm sure glad 
glad to see your brother, aren't you? You bet. You know he's not a bad guy for a Navy man. <laughs> <laughs> your brother's not a boy anymore, Gordon. He's grown up. He sure has, Mom. You don't have to worry about him now. That is if the Army doesn't ruin him. Do you remember how you fought his fights for him in grammar school? He could fight mine now. I'm sure glad you and Dad could come, even if it's only for lunch. Oh, he shouldn't have come at all with your father so busy. But the chance of all of us being together at lunch was too much to resist. No, I don't suppose anybody is hungry. Well, I'm so hungry I could eat the army mule. Well, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> We'll see you in Philadelphia at halftime. Okay, Dad. Eight to five on Army, Dad. Uh, Take care of yourself. Bye. Okay, bye. 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 Eight to five on Army. Junior, you just bring along your bathrobe. You bring yours. I'll let the shoulders out a little. It'll fit fine. <laughs> Junior, Army's fine in the Ivy League, but against Navy, it's boys against men. Okay, big brother. Uh, seriously, Davy, are you getting along okay up here? Of course, Gordon, why not? Well, I still kind of wish you'd gone to Annapolis. Yeah, I made the right decision, Gordon. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Didn't you like the Army hospitality? It's fine, beautiful one-room suite overlooking the river. I'm glad you have no complaints. Well, if I do, I'll mention your name, okay? <laughs> okay, Gordon. Sell you Annapolis, huh? Nah, he's gotten over that idea. But you know, I got the feeling during lunch that he's got something else on his mind. Well, what? Oh, I don't know. What made you say that? Well, you know, his brothers were pretty close. I almost always know when he's got something on his mind. I suppose you could call it just a hunch. But it's a strong enough hunch that I think Brother Gordon will bear watching while he's here at West Point. He's fine. I just left him. There haven't been any cadets eavesdropping, have there? No. I'm sure I'm not used to this espionage work, though. How does that check out with the records of the fellows who were here before us? Perfect. Exactly the same the last four weekends running. Well, I'm sure glad we don't have to do it. We do. What? Who says so? I do. Why, Gordy? Because the pattern is definitely established. We know how the enemy forces are deployed. The conditions of this mission will only deteriorate from inaction. Yeah, that's what the book says. And that's what I say. Do you think we can do it? I'm positive. Well, you, you have to prove it to me. You afraid of getting caught, Gordon? Yes, you know what can happen. That's right, I do know, but I still say we can do it. Well, here goes nothing. Count me in. Are you in or out? What are we supposed to do? Good. The mission goes as planned. Look, fellas, in a hundred years, this has never been done. How are we going to do it? Because we are sure of every single detail. We've gone over this before, Barney. It all checks out. We'll go over the plans once more. If we're to get away with this thing, there can't be one single slip-up. Now, here's the way we move. <laughs> Give me 4582, please. Corporal Glassman. Corporal? 
This is Cadet Captain Colby speaking. We may have an impromptu rally today. If we do, I'll send someone by within an hour. Right. It'll only take a second to bridle and saddle her. If there's no rally, I'll call back. I'll be standing by either way, ready, willing, and able. Thank you, Corporal. I wish the Army had more men like you. Goodbye. Hey, did he go for it? I think he did. Good. Now all we have to do is drive around for a half hour and then make our move. Right. Give me a hand. Anyone pass? No, not so far. It's 1711. Right. Exactly two minutes. And 14 seconds after you see me into the corral, you start down the hill at 22 land miles per hour. Get it? Got it. Here. I'm nervous. Look, the mission's being executed under controlled conditions. That's all you can ask for in any maneuver. Hey, you better get on up there. Afternoon, isn't it, Mr. Uh... Uh, Cochran, sir? We met before, Mr. Cochran. It's possible, sir. Yes. Well, uh, carry on. Yes, sir. Dave just walked into the building at the corral. Hello? Who's this? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir, I'll do that right away, sir, without fail. Oh, yes, sir, this is Corporal Glassman, sir. Uh, ready, willing, and able. Goodbye, sir. Sorry, Davy. 
I really am. Nice if every day was as beautiful as today, wouldn't it, Cadet uh, Conway? Uh, Covey. Covey. Yes, Covey. Well, that does it. Oh, Other side. Other side. Up you go. Thanks, Corporal. Thanks a lot. Okay. Get him back safely. Cadet, uh, get him back safely! Right! Turn right! That's a long way around. P.F.C. Gatune, sir. The Army Mule? Yes, sir. I'll check everything that goes through. Well, are you with me? I know what going to Annapolis without permission can mean, Dave. But the Army just can't sit still in view of what's happened. I'm with you. Good boy, Fred. Now, the thing they'll expect us to do is try to take back the Army Mule. Right. But that's exactly what we won't do. I don't understand. You, Carl, and I are going after the Navy GOAT.
don't know. The goat's been stolen. Now listen. Gentlemen, by the time you receive this note, you will know that the Navy goat has been taken. This raid was mounted purely for retaliatory reasons. A Navy without a goat is similar to an army without a mule. If the recipients of this letter are interested in an honorable exchange of prisoners of war, negotiations for such an exchange can be effected without loss of honor by either party. You can indicate your intention by appearing in Carvel Hall at 1600 promptly on the Prince George side. Looks like you two gentlemen have a date at Carvel Hall. Gentlemen, I presume you're here to effect an exchange of prisoners of war. We're prepared to conduct these negotiations as indicated in Covenant 12 of the Geneva Convention, and paragraph 114 is contained in the Articles of War. Are you prepared to do the same? Are you? We sure are. Treaty, pen, sign. Private joke, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Paragraph 114, the Articles of War, the Geneva Convention. Well, I learned a couple of things. That the army mule can't be stolen? Well, three then. The second is Junior has grown up. And what's the third? Crime doesn't pay. Shh. A little respect, please. Your goat and mule are just coming on the field. Yes, this is Annapolis, the United States Naval Academy, proud of its dignity, its history, its tradition but most of all, proud of its men. Next week, we will bring you another story of the men of Annapolis. Cochran was played by Daryl Hickman. David Cochran by Dwayne Hickman. <laughs>